Um, good afternoon, everyone. It is afternoon now. Um, I'm going to start my presentation by um, apologising. I'm um, a technical person, so um, I feel as though um, I'm in a bit of a bear's den talking to uh, a bunch of marketeers, um, especially as I'm going to be talking about some business and marketing constructs that we use when we're evaluating um, content management choice, platform choice, um, in order to support business strategy to um, to um, deliver you know, what you need as a business. So it's, and, and this is this is born from experience of, of working with um, clients. I've worked in digital for quite a few years. Um, I started out in digital in 96. I moved from um, the uh, rather seedy world of advertising publishing, so um, old school advertising. And um, I moved into digital and it was uh, quite new back then. Um, ironically, Reading Room were formed about the same time, although I didn't start my journey in digital with Reading Room. I started with a couple of friends in a, um, in a, in a room in Beckenham. Um, and uh, look, where it, well, look where it got me now. Um, so it's lots of experience in digital. Um, and um, as I said, I'm, I'm going to talk about some of the things that we like to consider um, for platform choice. Um, and um, as a bit of an introduction to Reading Room, Reading Room have been around for about 20 years. Um, and really, one it's not a USP because more and more agencies are doing this nowadays, is, um, is we like to look at actually what's the business problem we're trying to solve. Rather than just taking a brief from a client and say the client says, I want a website that does X, Y, and Z, it's actually, let's challenge that. Let's actually understand what business problems are we trying to solve? And sometimes that means we actually have to dig into the business problems because the clients aren't always aware of them. And we have to be sensitive to that as well because you don't want to come in looking like you know, some sort of arrogant consultant saying, do you know what, you, haven't got, you guys haven't got a clue, this is what you should be thinking about. So it's a, it tends to be a, a journey that we go on with, with our clients. Um, we're part of the IDOX group. We got acquired um, last year. IDOX are a portfolio company. They, they're mainly in public sector. Um, public sector software um, and um, you know I've been over my years I think I've been involved in three acquisitions and this is the only one where the company that's been acquired which has always been the one I've worked with um, hasn't exploded so this has been a really positive um, acquisition from the perspective of reading room. Um, we're 120 staff, staff and as um, I'm a divisional head um, I run a multidisciplinary team and we have several of those across the business. Um, I'm actually here today to talk on behalf of Kentico um, you know, Kentico are a sponsor. They've asked Reading Room as a goal partner to talk about Kentico. So I'm going to be talking about Kentico a lot and telling you how wonderful it is as a product. Um, and it's going to be sincere. Um, I, Reading Room, work with a number of content management systems. And one of the things that we are really keen to do whenever we engage with clients is actually identify, you know, what is the right platform for them. Um, sometimes the platform they think they want because it's, you know, it looks good on the magic quadrant in Gartner isn't always the right platform for them. So what I'm going to talk about in the presentation, and some of this was covered in the um, session right at the start of the day where the, where the panel, the expert panel were um, giving opinions about different things, is, is really, um, you know, what does, you know, what do you need to be um, thinking about from a... Um, from a maturity perspective. Where are you? How mature an organization are you digitally? Um, how does this fit in with your customer life cycle? And what, what's your current engagement with your customer life cycle look like? And then how do, how do you be pragmatic about um, implementation? Um, and some of this was touched on as well. It's about you know, making mistakes quickly, iterating, learning your lessons, and progressing. Um, and finally, really, you know, let's look at a content management system and uh, think about, you know, what can it do for us as an organization and what's it like to live with? Um, quite often, um, content management systems, digital projects can start out a, a bit as a bit of a vanity project for an organization. Um, and you don't really think about how, how are we going to support this behemoth that we've built um, moving forward. So... It is all about maturity, and it is all about understanding, you know, where you are as an organisation, um, to um, to to in, in order to make sure that you engage with your your clients in the right way. If you, you know, if you start at the wrong point, um, and you think that you're actually more mature than you are, you're likely to make mistakes. Um, you know, you don't jump a, if you jump a red light, you're likely to, you know, the, the best outcome is probably your store, or the worst outcome is you have an expensive car crash. And it's the same with digital. You need to make sure that you, you take the right approach at the right of time. Um, so some of the things that we, some of the tools that we look at when we want to understand where we are is actually look at the business and where is the business and how, 
how, do, how does the uh, business vision align to tactics that can be delivered? You know, and one of the models that we use is a VMOST model. There are hundreds and hundreds of models out there that help you analyze and understand how you align your vision, mission, objectives, strategy, and tactics. Um, but VMOST is one of them, and it's one that we use quite a lot. So we can really understand, you know, what is the vision of the organization? And the vision of the organization is actually, you know, why do you do what you need to do? It's not um, how you do it or what you do. It's actually why do you do it? Um, and then how does that tie to, you know, um, a mission, which is, you know, we've got the we've got the the vision, but what does this mean? What are the what what do we what do we do to uh, meet the vision? Strategy um, is something that uh, a framework that you'll create from the the mission to think about. Okay, this is how we're going to um, deliver this deliver against the, this mission and, and meet the uh, vision moving forward. And underpinning those will be tactics. Tactics are things you can do now, um, things you can try now, and things you can measure. Um, and that's the most important thing, is actually measuring you know, how effective are those tactics, how, how are they working. Um, and part of that is by always reviewing, you know, if you're using the VMOS, uh, VMOS model, which we do with quite a few clients where they don't have a, a model they use themselves, is, you know, how are we doing? How, how was that tactical delivery? How did it work against the strategy it was, it was put under? And how can, we, how can we improve that? One of the big constraining factors, and you can see I've used a Trumpism here, um, is, is, you know, obviously budget and time. You know, um, it's... It's great that you want all the toys in the shop, but you know, do you have the budget for it? And um, you know, do, do you actually have the time to play with them? It's, those are the sort of things you need to think about. And actually, there's a really strong argument, and something that we always talk about to clients about is starting simply. Um, start with um, simple things first. Start with uh, you know, where are we now, and how can we improve where we are? Small incremental changes are, are quite important. You don't want to to rush to the end goal. Um, too quickly, otherwise it will get quite expensive for you. Um, learn from your lessons. If you, if you can start off something simple with a small budget and you can prove success and you can prove that actually it's returned on your investment, then it's going to be easy to go to your, your stakeholders and get more, more, more budget, isn't it? Uh, you, you'd think so. But that's always our recommendation, is actually start um, um, at a place that is simple, something that you can measure, something you can achieve, and, and don't try and stretch yourself too quickly. Um, another thing that you need to think about when you're looking at um, a platform, and this is where you know platforms like Kentico come in and where they really support that customer maturity model all the way from you know the attract, which is effectively brochureware, where you're starting to align digital to your business strategy through to convert, where you're starting now to engage with your clients and think about, okay, what sort of, how do we segment our, our clients? How do we, how do we identify what sort of personas they, they present? And how do we then, you know, engage with those different types of people? How do we use auto, marketing automation, email, to make sure that, um, or data that we've learned about those users, about our customers, to actually make sure they're getting the optimal engagement on our website, that optimal relationship. Um, and then finally, where you really want to get to is is advocate. And we've you know we've talked about CRMs and we've talked about ERPs and SAPs. But you know if you've got a view using by integrating into any of those that gives you a holistic view of your customer, of your user, not just digi digitally, but how you interact with them offline as well, then that really, as an organisation, gives you the best opportunity to 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 engage with them and to optimise and, and get the best. Um, relationship you can with your clients. So, you know, and, th and this is where platforms like Kentico come in. They can do that early bit that, you know, there are hundreds and hundreds of content management systems in that space, in the, in the attract space. They can support the convert space. So, you know, as you, if this is where you are at the moment and you want to, oops, excuse me, and you want to uh, move to the convert phase, then, you know, Kentico will help you move in that direction and then finally to the advocate phase. But it's, it's a platform that's scalable and will support you no matter where you are starting on that, um, on that uh, customer experience maturity model. So it is, you really need to think about being mature when you're starting out your digital. It's, it's about thinking about, um, you know, where are we now? Understanding and being honest with yourself. What, what are we doing as an organization and what's our strategy for actually developing that and actually understanding where how you're engaging with your clients your users um, at this point in, in the relationship 
So key takeaways from this part of the presentation is, is, is how you align your business um, strategy and objectives and tactics to the content management system that you're going to use. Making sure that you've got a content management system that not only supports your immediate tactical objectives, but actually what, what, where do you want to be in a few months' time or a few years' time? Um, and what are the constraining factors with, for you as an organization? Is it the size of your team? Is it your ability to create content, which um, uh, someone earlier talked about the fact it's actually you know, something that takes a lot of effort? Um, is it the way you're working with your customers? What are the constraining factors? And embrace those and understand them, because those should be your starting points. Those should be the, the points where you think, these are the challenges we have. How does our platform selection actually help us to, to move forward and to um, engage better and create those relationships with our clients? Something else you probably need to, you, you should consider, not probably, you should consider as part of your um, platform selection is, is how does it fit with your customer life cycle? Um, how does it work with the way you're currently engaging with your customers? And when we looked at this uh, customer maturity model, this can apply to different parts of your customer, your customer life cycle. It may be that actually um, the attract bit, the raise awareness of your products or services, you're really strong in but you may be a bit weaker in actually where, how, do you, how do you engage with the clients at the transaction stage or beyond that at the engage stage. So compare, the, the, this model, this maturity model could be faceted to different parts of your, your, your customer life cycle. I've got a very simple customer life cycle here and I'm, I'm just going to talk it through with you very quickly. It's, again, you know, I'm not a marketeer, but you know, I'm going to talk about how um, digital should support this. So awareness. Um, awareness, typically this might be, um, let's play with the scenario that um, your site is, is well-structured, you're using well-structured data, well-structured content, um, and, it, and it appears well in natural search. So someone finds about, out about your product or service using natural search on Google or Bing, they come to your site. And because now we have data about that user, we know how they arrived at your site, we might even have some information about other information about that user, whereabouts they're based, um, what um, you know, any any browsing history that we're aware of, because they might have come to the site at a previous time, and we've we started collecting data on that user already. We can start to personalise and tailor the journey specifically to what they're looking for, and hopefully set the right cues, the right triggers, in order to encourage them to make that purchase. Once they have purchased, they're actually engaged with you. But how do you further that engagement? You know, is it through um, using the Kentico email marketing platform where you can email the clients and say, hey, you're using this product, here's some add-ons. Why don't you think about using these add-ons to actually make your experience with our product or service better? Or providing training. Have you thought about using your product in or this product or service in this way? Um, here's, a, here's a video about um, how someone else is using it successfully. Um, and by, you know, making sure that you're completely engaged with your, your user digitally, then you Ideally, you create advocates, and those in turn lead to repeat purchase, or in turn, um, they will tell other people about your products and services and um, ad act as advocates for you. To support this, I'm going to just talk about a couple of Kentico projects, um, Kentico sites that we've delivered, um, and um, at a very high level, just um, talk about specifically on the different parts of the customer um, customer life cycle, how they've used Kentico to their advantage. So I'm going to start with Lombard International. They're, um, um, they're a wealth management company. So they deal with high net worth individuals, not probably as high as, um, as C C uh, City Private Bank, but that's, that, that's how they work. They got acquired by a company called Blackstone um, um, about two years ago. Um, last year, Blackstone acquired another company called uh, Philadelphia Insurance, based in the US. Uh, Lombard are based in Luxembourg. Um, and um, they decided that they were going to put everything under the Lombard umbrella. So we were already working with Lombard whilst all of this acquisition and change was going on. Um, and Lombard, um, they work through partners. They don't deal with the high net worth individuals directly. They work through partners. So one of the challenges they had is how do we get our messages out to our different partners that actually our service, our offering has broadened, but also the markets that we can operate in has broadened as well. You know, we now have a... Uh, a footprint in, in the US, whereas before they were very much Northern European focused. We now have um, capability in, in the Middle East and Southeast Asia. So 
you know, they needed to find a way of delivering this message. And the way they did this is they used the Kensico marketing platform to educate and raise awareness of their products and services. Um, so that, um, you know, as part of their conversations with their clients, they're able to talk about, hey, this is what Lombard are doing. Or if they've got clients in, in some of the new markets that they're currently not talking about Lombard products, then they're able to do this. Um, the other nice thing about the, uh, the implementation we did for Lombard is because Kensico out of the box is actually really simple to use. It's, it uses a modular approach. It's very drag and drop. Um, when the decision was made to incorporate the um, Philadelphia insurance service into the same brand, they were able to do this with actually no support from Reading Room as their development partner. It was, they were able to, to do all of this internally, um, manage the deployment, um, and it made it really simple. And, and it's, it's nice for organizations like Lombard um, to be self-sufficient, you know, to be able to do these sorts of things without every time you need a change, you need to speak to your agency, you need to get it resourced, get it scheduled, you probably need to pay a high ticket, you need to make sure that, you know, the communication's gone smoothly so there's no difference between what they asked for and, and what they received. It's, they're able to, to, to do all of these things themselves. And the nice thing for organisations like Reader Room is actually it means that rather than, you know, just small changes that, you know, on, on actually that sexy, we get to work with organisations like Lombard on sexy stuff. So, you know, what's, how, do we, how do we support that, that business strategy that we've discussed with them um, to tactical delivery and, and um, have a, a programme of tactical delivery that we can work with? Another client that uh, works in the, um, that I want to talk about how they used Kentico to educate is key retirement solutions. A couple of years ago, the uh, legislation around pensions changed. Um, and um, as a result, something which for me was already confusing became even more confusing. Um, and um, key retirement solutions, um, without these guys, we created a site which actually allows um, their users to understand, you know, what are their options with their pension pot? You know, what, what can we do? You know, let, and to do this, we created, um, we created the capability. So key retirement solutions, KRS, were able without our support to create calculators, uh, personalized um, pension forecasts, personalized plans. Um, so lots of functionality that allowed them to, in a very simple way, communicate with their different users, um, you know, how, what their options are, and hopefully to buy one of their, one of their services or products. Um, you already heard uh, talk about Save the Children International um, earlier on. So Save the Children International, um, they have 30 member organizations. And um, each of the member organizations, they, they, historically, they've looked after digital themselves. To the two richest member organizations, that's not, that's not a problem. You know, the US and the UK, they generate a lot of donations. They're able to invest a lot in, in digital because they can prove that, that that works for them and it's a good channel for them in those countries. For other countries, other member, member organizations, it's a lot harder. You know, they may not be technically able to um, implement um, a good digital strategy or might not have the budget. So Save the Children International, who's the central body that manages Save the Children UK, Save the Children Bolivia, Save the Children Australia, um, have come up with this, co this program where, using the Kentico platform, we're able to very rapidly roll out um, changes that their members can, 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 can take advantage of. Um, a good example of this is, um, you know, we worked with um, a local payment provider in uh, Mexico and another one in India to make sure that, um, you know, those members were able to take donations online um, using Kentico. So we created a, a, an MVP, we tested it, we iterated it, um, we made some mistakes, we learned from those mistakes, and, um, and then we've, this is now live. So if you go to Mexico or India, it's using the Kentico platform. And now this is something that ever other members can, can take advantage of. Um, and let me tell you that, um, you know, having worked with a payment gateway provider in India and a payment gateway provider in Mexico, I'll be interested to know if any of them could be more difficult than, than those two were to, uh, to implement with. But it's, it, again, for Kentico, it's, it's proved a really good point about how easy it is to very rapidly deliver um, um, products and services online. Um, we worked very closely with the Save the Children team um, who are based um, in London um, and um, you know they're able to roll this out independently so we support them with our areas of expertise. Um, they then implement, 
we test, and then we iterate. So it's been a very successful program for them and something that um, is on their roadmap for you know, creating efficiency and improving engagement across the uh, many countries they, they work with. We started working with Kingspan about a year ago. Um, the uh, site's due to go live in uh, November. We're using the Kensco platform for them, and it was quite an interesting challenge with uh, Kingspan in as much that um, they're, in, they're in about 175, uh, sorry, 120 different countries, um, and they sell products, um, and the way they traditionally did that, the building products, is they sold it by the, the way the business was organized. They were basically split into four divisions. Um, the, um, and the divisions like that, you know, it meant that they could talk about their products. It meant that they could own their relationship with, um, with their clients. It meant that they could present the brand, the products, um, and um, have those conversations um, at a regional relevant level. You know, the way you transact business or talk about, or, you know, manage your content and present your content in Germany is very different to the way you might in the U.S., for example. Um, so it met, they allowed them to be very regional relevant for their content. Um, the challenge was how do we get all of these uh, websites, and there's 175 of them, onto a single platform? And what we quickly identified is actually as a, as a user, um, you don't care that Kingspan is structured into four divisions. You want to know if I'm in the Czech Republic and I want to... Um, I've got a building challenge that I need, I need support on. You go to Kingspan in the Czech Republic and you can find the product that you need from across their many divisions. Um, and kudos to Kingspan. It's a, it was a bit of a, a change for them, but it's something they've, they've, they've accepted. But where Kentico support this, supports this is it's allowed us to be, um, because of its modular nature, we've been able to introduce a pattern library approach. So we create content components. Um, and those content components, um, you can then decide which of those you use on, on different types of pages. Um, and you can manage your content very much separately from the uh, presentation layer. Um, the other advantage of this is, is, as well as being able having flexibility about what content and what conversations you have at a regional level, is that um, some of the Kingspan brands are, are, don't have any Kingspan logos on them. Some of the Kingspan group companies are totally independent. A good example of this is a Belgian company called Eurocida, who um, last year for a trade show, they decided that um, they wanted to switch from their existing uh, CMS platform to Kentico um, because, you know, um, Kingspan group were already paying for it. It saves them a lot of money. Um, so very quickly, in a very short space of time, we were able to build and deploy a site um, in Kentico for a for a German trade show for this uh, Belgian company, and now that's the you know the first of the sites that's using that, and it looks completely different from the other Kingspan branded sites. But this approach does allow Kingspan to make sure that they're controlling the brand, have control over the presentation, whilst not taking away the flexibility to engage with their local audiences as they like. Some of the other things that we did with Kingspan as well is um, they're. Um, when we started working with them, we found out that they had about 60 or 70 instances of different CRMs, you know, Dynamics, SAP CRM, um, Salesforce. They love Salesforce in the US. Um, and, you know, of course, that, that leads to a challenge of how do you create an API for 60 or 70 different CRMs? Well, you know, that's, you don't. That's a bad, that'll be a bad move. You need to actually keep things as simple as possible. Otherwise, you've got this bit of, um, connection to your website that you're always having to maintain every time something something changes there. So we, we came up with a solution where we actually use Dynamics to communicate directly with the website, um, and then, you know, those business units can decide, you know, how they interact with that instance of Dynamics. So it's been a, it's been a, a very successful project for them. Um, and the pattern library is something that, um, you know, we use in more and more across projects just because it gives that flexibility, that scalability, and you're not tied down to having specific bits of content in, in, um, in, a, in a page template. It, it, it gives you that, that flexibility, and it's, it's a real strength of, of, of Kentico. So some of the takeaways from this segment is that, you know, Kentico does support the entire customer lifecycle. Um, no matter where you are, but you know it comes with the caveat is you need to understand how we engage when engaging with our clients at those different parts of that customer life cycle. It's very scalable, so you can start simple um, and then build on that, that, that uh, build on what you what you've got to something that's um, actually meets your strategic goals through tactical delivery. Um, and it's really easy to use. It's um, of all the content management systems I've 
I've, been, I've used over the years, Kentico is by far the easiest. It's, um, it's, what I like about it is it really does give organizations the, um, the ability to actually take control of a lot of digital yourselves rather than have to be um, at the, you know, constrained by what's, your, what's the capability of your implementation partner. To, to do things, it actually frees frees you up to make decisions about you know I want to build a new workflow for this um, for this um, email marketing that I'm doing, and I want to plug it into this one into Dynamics, or I want this one to go to uh, another another system. It, it allows that level of of functionality just through drag and drop. It's a very simple CMS to use. But you need to be pragmatic about implementation, um, and some of this again was touched on earlier in the day when we were talking about you know make mistakes. Um, learn quickly, and then uh, pivot and adjust. Um, and um, and that's a that's a, a recommendation that we we always encourage our clients to to take. Be agile in the way you deliver digital. Don't think this is the end goal. This is what we want. Here's a 12 month plan to deliver that end goal. Because between now and 12 months later, your business is going to change, and you need to be flexible. You need to have a have a way of approaching that. So the MVP, the prototyping approach, is something that we, you know, we really do encourage. It's something that we we engage with. Um, not all clients are, uh, or all projects actually are, are meet that. You know, we work with a um, a national home builder. They're very old school IT. They're very um, ITIL. They're very much about process and documentation. You know, the way that agile approach wouldn't work for that client. They just, it just, it would break the relationship with them. So you have to find the right process that's pragmatic and works with you as an organization. This is a typical approach that we like to, to take. And, you know, the nice thing about it is, is you can, you can make assumptions, you can experiment. Um, and with Kentico, you can carry out those experiments on your production site. So out of the box, it does multivariate testing, A-B testing. Why don't you try different colored buttons or different positions of buttons or different psychological cues like last few remaining or, you know, most people like this product over this product. You know, it really gives you the opportunity to experiment with, 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 with some of those psychological principles. Um, then you can build, you know, you can build those variants and per personalizations, um, put it on your site and, and then monitor it. You know, Kensco will... Um, along with, you know, using other sources such as, um, you know, Google Analytics or, you know, whatever else you, you, you wish to use to analyze, um, you get a really holistic view of how, how has that performed and actually did it work as expected? Did it work better than expected? What, did, what surprises came out of this experiment that actually we would like to apply to other experiments? And actually, more importantly, what didn't work and how can we improve it? So it really gives you that opportunity to analyze, refine, and then improve. So it's, a, it's quite a cyclical way, and it works, it really does support that customer maturity model where you're making incremental changes to develop that relationship with your clients. I'm gonna finish off this uh, last segment of my presentation by really talking about um, you know, some of the things that you need to think about um, when you're um, acquiring a content management system. Um, the biggest mistake, mistakes I see clients making is they choose a content management system because of um, its market position or because of all of the amazing things it can do. But they don't always think about what, what's the content management system going to be like to live with? You know, have I got enough people to, to support it, etc.? And um, I'm going to steer well clear of the legion of technical things that you need to think about and understand. Um, and I'm going to focus on some of the um, some of the business decisions that you need uh, questions that you need to ask when thinking about your your you know the what's BAU look like for your content management system. And some of those are you know what does does the CMS support your strategy? So it's not just does it meet our short term objectives, our objectives for the next twelve months, but how does it look for 18 months, three years, or, you know, if you're really ambitious, five years? Where might we be in five years' time? And, and you know, and with the art of that imagination, do we think the content management system and the roadmap that, we, that it has, because we, you know, we're going to invest in a content management system that's well-supported, has a product development path, does it, does, it meet the, that, does it meet our strategy? What is the capability of your team? Um, if your team, if you've got a really small team, then you don't want a content management system that's going to eat up all of your time. You want actually a content management system that actually enables you to learn things and to experience things um, and to try things, rather than just um, spend all of your time staying still, because that's 
that you can't meet your strategy if actually all your CMS does is allow you to stand still. You're, you're never, you're never, unless you get hire more people or um, you know make some other dramatic changes. That that's that's the likely outcome. So you've got to think about you know what's the what's the capability of your team. Are you going to be federating content out to different parts of the business? And if you do that, how do you ensure quality? How do you make sure that that tone of voice is consistent? Um, that um, the um, the um, the the messaging is right. It's relevant to the audience that you're 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 presenting it to. If you're a global business, you know what you know what. How are you going to live with that? Um, then. What's it like to measure performance? What sort of data can I get out of my content management system? Because Google Analytics, as amazing as it, as it is, and it, um, I would imagine it's going to get monetized quite shortly, only really looks at the presentation layer. It only looks at the what's going on at the front end, you know, the browser um, interaction with your, your user. And wh where products like Kentico come in is it actually starts to help you think of what's going on in the application layer. What do those data trans transactions look like? And are, am I able to score those transactions so I'm delivering value data or data with values attached to it back to my CRM? Um, and these are important things. It's important you have this data, this understanding, so you can, make, you can understand and learn from digital and then adjust your strategy, your tactics going forwards. Um, and, you know, then there's the hygiene factors you need to think about, which is, well, does start to air on the, on the uh, technical side, which is security, performance, and ongoing support. You want reassurance that actually the platform you're investing in or your digital platform is, is scalable, it's growing, it's got a roadmap. You know, all of those sorts of things you need to think about. And Kentico you know, is, a, is a mature product. It's on Kentico 10 at the moment, and it does have that roadmap. Um, you know, I'm, uh, as part of their partner advisory board, I get... You know, I get insights on what's coming along, and it's 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 exciting and it's interesting, and it really does change and improve their position in the market. Has anyone got any questions? <laughs>